Alright. Couple updates. <clears throat> I haven't got a lot done. I have to keep the mill working, so to speak, so I can continue to do different jobs on it. So I haven't got a chance to pull it down and uh, do the ball screws. Mainly the updates have been I got the surround somewhat where I want it. This chip guard for me was pretty huge. That's uh, what I wanted to accomplish was keep the chips off the floor. So but I've noticed that uh, there's a couple things on here. Turn the light on. Um, depending on where you're at. <coughs> Excuse me. For movement. It wants to hit this back here. So um, Most of that is mainly for the back here because the center line of the the center line of the spindle if I'm trying to keep full movement you know theoretically is at the edge of the table so to be way back there I, I don't think for man you know, it's nice to have full travel so I don't think it's going to be a problem for anything that I do but um, as a result I'm going to go ahead and I may not go this low but basically I'm going to flatten this off and bring it up on the side there. I wanted to keep as much chips around as I could. But, you know, as as you can see, if, if the, I guess if the spindle's down in there and it comes forward and it'll hit this back chip guard. <clears throat> I don't like... What I got going on here, it's just basically a, a valve with the extensions of the, the line lock stuff. Um, I got on the way, I've got to, I'm going to do a, a manifold and then uh, do the same with the air. But I want to get the, the air hooked up as far as electronically over here. Put a solenoid valve. Um, pick these things up for washing chips. Just trying to find something cheap. And these are actually pretty nice. The regular price on them at Baumgar said uh, it's in the like sprayer, like a few like the farm spray stuff. But the regular price I think was was either forty or fifty bucks a piece. And for whatever reason, I might believe that they have an overstock on them for Father's Day. I'm going to end up, uh, but they were f $3.99. So I think I'm going to go and I bought two. Um, one for this and then one for the other um, CNC over here. I've got a um, this line here just kind of teed off for coolant if I'm washing chips off the table it's kind of nice to have a separate hose I guess so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go back and get but what I'll end up doing is cutting you know cutting the length of it of course it'll be probably a few inches off the end of that and keep the tip so and then another thing that I did with with this here, um, what I was gonna do, I was gonna have a a deal here where it's a uh, it had a hole and then a grommet, a half grommet on each side here. But I decided not to do that. Uh, I ended up modifying this. I have uh, basically took this this uh, lead screw or whatever that was sticking way out here. I cut it down and I took a cap screw bolt, a half inch, bored the 
um, the little lead screw and then turned that down and then pressed that in and welded it so that it made basically that lead screw that was in here it made it like a uh, um, like a cap screw type thing so it made it recessed so I was able to keep the because this here will come out but all I did here was just uh, I was trying to find them long like couplers for half inch I have to go to Menards today so I couldn't find them at Baumgars but I have to make a new one because it's too short um, basically wanted it to clear all of this so I'll have to uh, extend it way out here but what I ended up doing was the reason I did that was because uh, I have a set screw I put in here, uh, but that that will be part of. I bought this thing. It's pretty nice. It's just kind of an inertia handle, speed handle. It's got some weight to it, so uh, the thought process is I'll just make this new one and then put it in with a set screw, and then I'll have it like over here or something out of the way, but easily. I don't know, maybe over here or something. I'll build a little rack, but <laughs> I was gonna build a speed handle, but you know, for I got this thing for 19 bucks. It's the amount of time that it would have took me to machine that. I mean, although it would have been fun to machine a speed handle, it just didn't seem like it was in my best interest to waste the time. So, uh. That's pretty much the updates. I, I've do, noticed that uh, there's several things on the control panel that I want to uh, still incorporate. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, I just turned. The, I just come off the motherboard. I wanted everything, you know, controlled by the the control panel if I could. Uh, but what I want to do is add like. Uh, go to go to zero go to program zero go to home machine home um the the jog feed rate up and down the feed rate in the program up and down i'd like to be able to put that on the panel even though this is a touch screen so theoretically i don't really need it but it just makes it a little nicer i think i may change these i don't know i like these they're pretty cool um, they're just a mushroom head momentary button but I think I want to do a, a recessed cycle start with a protruded um, feed hold which on the machines that I've ran at work that's kind of the way everything is set up and then rather than the mushroom it'll just be it'll be you know just a standard button uh, I may get to that I may not and this may work out just fine I don't know but I noticed the I'm gonna have I've had this thing down it looks like a mess I've had to thought I had the wire loom uh, sorted out but I realized that I've had to take that uh, drive down several times I'm gonna have to utilize the OEM codes on the breakout board for on the input pins so and that's basically to be able to implement <coughs> <coughs> excuse me this here was easily to achievable and I may be able to do it I have an eye pack in the back basically which emulates uh, keyboard control um, this is no mystery as far as home CNC a lot of people have already done it but I thought it was cool to incorporate for my jogs this joystick but and it's just just limit switches on each each axis so there's really no uh, I noticed I was watching Haas machine and on his controller on that geo 704 his joystick was like a variable the more you did it the faster it would get I mean that's that was something that I didn't really know about and that guy is just 
too smart for his own good, I think. <laughs> I don't know how somebody could be that smart. Um, but I also want to get it to where it actually boots that uh, mock that boots when you boot the computer I want it to boot directly to that I haven't got to that yet either so um, and there's the drive when I get all this because I want to do uh, on the table when I get it all apart I'm going to plumb uh, oil lines to where I'm hoping to have just a button up here to where way oil or you know oil and then once the whole system's primed and it's on the coat of oil where it needs to be then I want to do it on the uh, on the ways as well as the ball screws so <clears throat> it's the more you learn the worse off you are because I'm looking at it going wow it'd be kind of neat to have double double nutted uh, ball screws I've got C7s which are a little better grade as far as ground um, but when this all comes apart I'll have to make of course my bearing plates on the end and then I think I'm gonna do the because I got it set up two to one this for me was easiest to do at the time but since I got standard sizing on your ball screws I'm gonna go ahead and I've got all the mounts and stuff to make the motors direct drive like everybody else does I, I think that after all the uh, ways are oiled like they're supposed to be and I have a, a better ball screw in there that uh, the direct drive will be more feasible it won't take quite as much torque uh, I think I'll probably do some drag chain because I got limit switches because my thought was that uh, I've got the CNC over here but uh, I have parts that I put in there with these jigs um, right here and a couple other places but and I can feasibly get by with uh, no limit switches on this setup because it's basically I'm setting up I'm establishing uh, machine home every every setup so and the only reason that is if I had limit switches and everything was consistent on the parts that I do then it wouldn't be no big deal then I could put limit switches and everything would be uh, the same but the parts are never the same so it really isn't that big a deal whereas the parts that I want to set up to do on here um, I think it's going to be very there's no way to escape it I think that I need to uh, establish a, ma a machine home uh, that or have a I'm gonna have a I'm gonna end up making a stop over here that's adjustable and then I'll have certain setups for my main concern is I want to be able to do these Holly or Holly main bodies where uh, I can just mill the choke horn off and do even do some 3D uh, around the radius and around the edge here is what I want to be um, so if I could find somewhere to where it's but in theory I would have to actually uh, have have that as I would have to home that every setup as well so uh, I think it's going to be pretty important for me to establish the limit switches and uh, uh, that way I can just you know just like everything else just go to instead of coming up here go to zero 
which it's no big deal. Um, I can either come go up there or come over here to uh, program reset and then uh, go to program zero and then there, I'll have one that says uh, uh, machine home. But when I did some of this um, routering on, and labeling on the other machine, the, the paint chipped. So it kind of looks like crap. I was trying to uh, re-detail it, but once I get everything established to where I want it, then I'll go back through and, and detail everything up. So I think that's about it. Another thing that I don't like is this MPG has been malfunctioning. Um, the PC, I don't know if that comes up there not recognized so I don't know if it's the driver that's corrupted or what I need to do there sometimes it works and sometimes it don't let's even try a, a shut it off maybe it's the before it never used to matter on the sequence as far as whether I booted or if I had that powered on and I booted the computer or you know vice versa so let's try a different boot sequence and see if it makes it any different but there again it's always off and on that it works yeah see it didn't matter but then you go over here and then it doesn't matter wherever I change the port it still doesn't recognize it so I don't know if I need to reload the driver or what I need to do it's kind of frustrating because that was kind of a nice little addition um, and of course I have my USB for loading g-code if I'm doing it in the house um, I'm gonna have the probe what I wanted to do was probe the I'm gonna, uh, I wanted to do a, not necessarily probe my tools, but I wanted to actually reverse engineer some of this stuff and hopefully maybe probe it, but after some looking around on the internet, I'm wondering if the 3D scanner isn't the way to go. I don't know yet. I'm kind of miles off worrying about that, so. But I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks.